Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. It looks like uh, one of Ripple's co-founders may no longer have any XRP to sell sooner than later, actually. Um, I was kind of surprised to see how soon this might occur, and I, I'll tell you right now, I would not mind that one bit. I'm kind of tired of this stuff being in the headlines. Uh, because I I, just, I feel like I have to address this stuff. It's the right thing to do. Like I don't uh, I don't think that uh, running away from uh, bad sounding news is the right answer. There are some people that say don't talk about the bad sounding things. You're 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 propping up the fudsters. This and that. I'm like, what kind of wimpy approach to life is that? If somebody says garbage publicly, you're gonna sit there and just take it. Uh, I say no to that. I'm gonna set the record straight on this crap. But uh, here's a headline from you today. Jed McCaleb dumps 76 million XRP over the weekend with 404 million still in his wallet. And so uh, he, I'll give you the specifics in just a moment, but uh, we might not have to deal with this much longer. Um, also, I want to share with you some, some new comments from David Schwartz, who is Ripple's CTO and a co-creator of the XRP ledger. And uh, he was speaking openly about uh, some stuff that has gone down in the past with Jed McCaleb here. So uh, interesting stuff, because obviously there was a falling out. You know, Jed McCaleb, again, like I just cited, one of uh, Ripple's co-founders. Uh, he was with the company for, I don't remember, not very long, a year or two. There was some sort of falling out uh, that he didn't agree on from a business perspective where Ripple should go. So ended up uh, causing a bunch of havoc, harm to the company, and um, and then went and started Stellar. So that's uh, where we're at. Now, to be clear, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice, and you absolutely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast in the space, and I run this YouTube channel purely as a hobby. That is indeed all that it is. So let's go ahead and take a look at this now. This comes from uh, Leonidas, an XRP community member who runs XRPArcade.com. Fantastic website. If you've not checked it out, give it a whirl. But anyway, uh, Leonidas tweeted out the following. Jed will be selling, I'll just round this number here, a 38 million XRP per day this week. This amounts to roughly 268 million XRP or $166 million at current prices in one week. Whew. He's only making 166 million in one week. Is how is he going to survive? <laughs> I, know. I tell you, look, I, I don't have any trouble with anybody uh, else being. Does somebody else having having a lot of money doesn't give them special power over me. So like, I'm I'm never uh, offended or hurt by people that uh, make money. However, they're making as long as it's by legal means, not hurting people. Like, I don't care if Brad Garlinghouse sells his XRP. I don't care if Chris Larson sells his XRP. I mean, it, it's part of their initial compensation. It's part of their package. What the hell do I care about what they're doing as long as they're not hurting me? That's what I'm getting away. But anyway, uh, Leonidas tweets, at this rate, his 2.896 billion XRP would run out by May. At half that rate, 19 million per day, he would run out by mid-July. At 10 million per day, by the end of the year. So look, this would be fantastic. Once it's all sold, we're never going to have to have these stupid articles about uh, you know the, the price of XRP being suppressed because of this quote-unquote dumping from Jed McCaleb, which is completely nonsensical, as I'm going to highlight for you right now. But let's call out some garbage here, if I could, just a moment. Uh, and I can, because you know why? This is my channel, damn it. I do what I want. But here's a headline from Coinspeaker.com, um, titled, XRP tanks 12% as Ripple co-founder Jed McCaleb dumps over 6 million XRP. So there you go. They're claiming XRP went down 12% because of Jed McCaleb, when in reality, the whole market went down at the same time, having nothing to do with uh, with Jed's transactions. Uh, and, and so look, I've talked about this before, but let's go ahead and smash this FUD again. And so there's somebody named Billy Hamilton who tagged a credible crypto who is a chart analyst that I highlight on this channel from time to time. And uh, just shared the screen grab that Leonidas, uh, it, it includes something from Leonidas here, which I just read to you about what, his, what Jed's holdings are, how much he's selling per day, this and that. And, um, and, and so he, this individual just wanted thoughts from Credible Crypto on the impact of this selling of XRP from Jed. Credible Crypto responded with the following. 166 million XRP per week is 23 million per day. And average daily volume is between six to ten billion dollars per day, which means his selling accounts uh, for 0.3 percent of average daily volume. 
aka negligible. Yeah, so come on. 0.3% like pressure to the downside, that's nothing. There's no way that could measurably measurably be uh, be be noticed. Like it just it can't happen. And mind you, and again, I love pointing this out too, because people talk about ripple dumping and jed dumping and keeping the price down. And I'm just sitting there, okay, well, how the hell did XRP run from 20 something cents to almost four dollars then while all of this was happening three years ago? Well, clearly it's not a great enough percentage of total volume to have any material impact whatsoever. So it's a bogus argument. And again, the timing, that's why coin speaker, like, damn it. This is why we can't have nice things, coin speaker. Like, coin speaker, you're drunk. Go home. Like, I just, I, I, I just, I can't even. I am not capable of evening right now. I just, I can't even. So... <laughs> <laughs> that's right so incredible crypto absolutely knocked it out of the park there that's absolutely the case you know he's, he's completely right about this um now moving on though on the top it is on jed mccaleb still but um there was a thread here started by ripple employee matt hamilton and he just recently he's been in the community actually for years just recently got hired by ripple he's uh he's uh specifically working with ripple x which is the development arm which is uh, basically just doing, RippleX is just doing everything they can to promote a healthy XRP ecosystem. But anyway, <clears throat> he, he started this tweet, Twitter thread um, having to do with the block folio hack. If you don't know about it, just go ahead and Google it. There's some really disgusting, vile things that uh, were, were were allegedly sent out from Blockfolio, but it was just hackers. And uh, it, it, like they're, they're terrible enough things that I refuse to highlight them in a, in a video. Uh, on this channel. If you want to know what it is, you can go Google it. But uh, the thread started on that topic. And so Matt Hamilton was just commenting that uh, this is likely a hack or an inside job. David Schwartz Ripple, CTO, co-creator of the XRP Ledger, responded to that and wrote, when you work in this space, you know there's all kinds of crazy stuff you're going to have to handle and fight, but it's the stuff you didn't even remotely anticipate that makes you crazy. And then somebody responded to that and wrote, for example, question mark, to which David Schwartz actually did respond. And this gets interesting. Check this out. Well, in the case of Ripple, the drama with Jed starting stellar. In the case of cryptocurrencies generally, the rise of loyalty to the asset that enriches you and your buddies at the expense of being friendly to genuine innovation. I'm sure I could come up with a dozen more. And indeed, the uh, tribalism is nonsensical in this space. The toxic maximalism, mostly coming from Bitcoiners, frankly, but uh, they're, they're, they're maximalists for pretty much every coin out there. They're even XRP maximalists, and I think it's silly to be an XRP maximalist. That makes no sense. It's my favorite cryptocurrency, but I'm still pro-Bitcoin. I'm long Bitcoin. I hold Bitcoin in a bunch of different cryptocurrencies. So whatever, that's just where I stand. Uh, then somebody responded to that tweet from David Schwartz and wrote, how is it that you still haven't digested Jed's departure for Stellar? There was no non-competition clause and therefore had the right to create a competing company. This competition should even allow Ripple to outdo itself and be stronger, no? Yeah, and uh, I, I don't think that they're disputing any sort of non-competition thing. It's it's the train wreck that ensued. So I'm not where this uh, I'm not quite sure where this individual got the idea that they had a tr you know some sort of concern about just new competition. Um, now in reality, the business model of Stellar is so different. It's hard to, for me to even view them as a competitor. They're not trying to position uh, their you know the Stellar Lumens as a as a bridge currency. Or <laughs> I mean, if they are. I don't see it happen. You, you point it to me where it's getting used anywhere. I don't see it. But anyway, David Schwartz responded to that and wrote, Jed solicited investors. Founders give shares and voting rights to investors. Corporate governance is a real thing that doesn't work if a founder who, who uh, finds a decision doesn't go their way reacts by taking public acts to harm the company and its investors. So I don't know specifically that uh, it's ever been stated exactly what the disagreement was. All I know is that there was some sort of uh, just conflict about directionally where Ripple should head. And uh, there were people that had voting rights and Jed didn't get his way. And he effectively threw a tantrum the way it's made out to be. So I don't know the specifics. I probably never will. Although if they come out, that would be really interesting. Uh, but check this out. This is interesting too. David Schwartz then wrote, Jed also violated this agreement with Arthur Brito, who was entitled by contract to 2% of assets created with the Stellar Ledger. And I'd never heard that before. Um, and so Arthur Brito, he is one of the three that created XRP and the XRP Ledger. So it was David Schwartz, Jed McCaleb, and Arthur Brito. And so this 
is a is a document um, just titled Agreement with Arthur Brito, September 17th, 2012. And there's nothing s uh, specifically in here about Stellar, but there doesn't have to be. Um, we're, we're part of, I read this whole thing. I don't want to read the whole thing on the channel. It's on the screen if you want to take a look. But there's a part towards the bottom that uh, I think is just kind of like an all-encompassing statement. Um, here, I'll just read the bottom part. The, the founders further agree that the Ripple platform will be made available for distribution and licensed under a permissive open source license as soon as operationally optimal. It is agreed that Brito shall consent to open source his contribution to the Ripple platform at the same time uh, that all other Ripple founders do the same. In exchange, I think this is the part, in exchange for assigning to the company his IP rights in Ripple, Brito shall have a lifetime fully paid up license to develop apps or new functionalities on the Ripple platform. Uh, and so actually, oh, it was the part above then. So no, that's all relevant, what I just covered. But there's this piece up here uh, stating that uh, Brito, Brito shall have the right to acquire additional credits at no cost to him, sufficient to bring his credit grant to 2% of the total number of credits. And so the reason that this would apply to Stellar is because uh, Stellar is actually a clone of the, uh, of the XRP ledger. So I think that would be the argument as best I can tell. And so it, it was basically just literally a copy of the XRP ledger. They tweaked a few things, this or that, but it's functionally extremely similar from a technological perspective. And so according to David Schwartz, this should have given Arthur Brito the, the rights to 2% of, uh, of Lumens, which apparently did not happen. So how about that? I'd never heard it before, thought it was interesting, and decided to share it. But um, I will go ahead and wrap up there. Thank you very much for stopping by, my friends. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.